My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. When out looking for snakes, sometimes you may encounter many different species. Got another racer! And sometimes, you find absolutely nothing. This one I definitely can flip. No, oh, it's flat. For me, finding a more common species is always exciting. <laughs> Look at that! Ever since I was introduced to the amazing world of snakes, I've undergone hours of research trying to figure out how to find one of the most cherished snakes in the United States, the Western Milk Snake. To see one of these in the wild, it takes a lot of work and a lot of luck. But I know a thing or two about finding an uncommon snake. Yes! Those are smooth green snakes! The smooth green snake is one of the more difficult snakes to find in Utah for many reasons. The Utah milk snake, however, is even harder to find because it's only a few weeks out of the entire year they aren't spending their time deep underground, where an encounter is impossible. So I'll have to time my visit just right. To find one, all I need to do is flip over rocks that snakes like this may be hiding under. The problem is, there's millions of rocks, but just one me. So I have to pick and choose which rocks look most suitable for finding a snake. But even still, you never really know which rock is going to be the lucky one until you flip it. Another gopher. Unfortunately, it's not a milk snake, but a much more common sight, a gopher snake. Despite that I was seeing snakes under rocks, I still went home disappointed, because it wasn't my target snake. That's not a milk snake. Before long, the breeding season for milk snakes had ended, and I still haven't found one. So I'll have to resort to finding one a different way. Cruising roads at night in hopes that we see one crossing. There's nothing like driving a lonely road in the middle of nowhere only to see as far as your headlights can shine, and having no idea if you'll find destiny crossing the road. All right, another snake on the road. There's a snake in the road, but it's hard to tell what it is from the car, so we run to investigate. Turns out, it's not a milk snake, but something far more dangerous. A baby Great Basin rattlesnake. Alright, so this right here is exactly what we want to see tonight. So out here, of course, this is a pretty common snake, but a baby, baby rattlesnake like this is the perfect meal for an adult milk snake. These snakes are actually incredibly intelligent, and they'll figure out that you're not a threat pretty quickly. We're gonna move this guy off of the road and uh, make sure he gets to the other side safely. Seeing that rattlesnake was a sign that milk snakes might be out. And then, it happened. But I was too late. It had been hit by a car moments before I arrived. I've seen dead and even dying snakes on the road before but the pain of seeing such a valuable animal die before my eyes was traumatizing, and I wanted to quit, so I wouldn't risk seeing that again. As the temperatures cooled down for the winter, I decided to use my time wisely by doing some research to find some of the most suitable and least disturbed places to look where more established populations of these snakes may be. As spring set in, my hopes and expectations were high. I headed out to the perfect places at the perfect time and flipped hundreds and hundreds of rocks, some small and some big enough to weigh over 100 pounds. For hours, I was hiking miles off trail, hoping that my time and research would pay off. But the more rocks I flipped, oh, hell, the less hopeful I was getting. God, I just couldn't understand it. What was I doing wrong? It's a new day and I left early before the ground had a chance to warm up. On this particular outing, a milk snake was the last thing on my mind. So when this happened, I was absolutely dumbfounded. What? I just flipped this rock over, and this is curled up under it. I'm so... My... God... I did it! I did it! I totally did it! Oh, oh my god! Oh, I'm shaking, dude. Oh my god, this poor thing has to deal with me now. Oh my god. This is 
the Utah milk snake. This is a snake I've been trying to find for probably longer than any other species I've ever tried to find. This is a rather rare species, easily the rarest species I've seen in Utah uh, at the time of filming this video. It's pretty normal for someone to spend years looking for this snake and have no success. You can see this thing looks venomous because it's got super bright colors, but this is actually a completely harmless snake. They cannot hurt you, they are non-venomous. A lot of people say these snakes look like this to mimic coral snakes. However, maybe in Arizona that would make sense because you get coral snakes in Arizona. But up here in Utah, there are no coral snakes. So why do these snakes look like this? Well, another theory is what is known as aposomatic coloration. An aposomatic color is basically anything with bright colors, whether the snake is venomous or not. Potential predators will think that it's gotta be toxic one way or another, so I should probably leave it alone. And that's why these snakes have bright colors, right? Well, a lot of the predators that pick off these snakes are actually blind to the colors that makes this snake stand out. So, in, if anything, when these guys slither really quickly to rather colorblind animals, they actually blend in. You might have heard the saying, red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, kill a fellow. And that's just a rhyme that people go by to try and remember if the snake they're looking at is venomous or not. Here in Utah, you don't even have to apply that rhyme. Any snake that looks even remotely like this is immediately a completely harmless snake. There's not a venomous species of snake that is native to the state of Utah that has any sort of bright coloration like this. This is one of the only banded snakes you can find in northern Utah. A lot of people unfortunately go out and actually capture Utah milk snakes to sell. Um, and unfortunately they get poached. And this is why it is extremely important that we conserve these snakes as best as we can because this is one of the most sensitive species of snake out in Utah. So where do they get the name milk snake? Farmers would see these around their barns and they assume that they were actually there to drink the milks of the cows that they had in their barns. Uh, obviously that's not true, these things do not drink milk. And this is a type of king snake actually, and this is the only species of king snake you can actually find up here in northern Utah. But uh, it is completely fossorial, meaning they live basically their entire lives underground. And that is why these snakes are so hard to find. Most snakes that are fossorial are really, really hard to find. So first line of defense that this snake has to any potential predator could be the colors. However, the big thing you'll notice with milk snakes, especially when they just are not happy with you, is they, they get kind of twitchy. If you touch them, they just twitch. Another thing these snakes do is called musking, where they basically let out this stinky substance from their butt. It's not really pee or poo, it's just meant to smell bad, and it's meant to make them seem as unappetizing to any possible predator as possible. So what do these snakes eat? These guys are probably more picky than most of the snakes out here. However, they are a type of king snake. King snakes get the name king because they are known for eating other snakes. Snakes. They actually have a resilience to even the venom of any sort of venomous snake that naturally lives around it. These guys are constrictors, so when these guys get a hold of their prey, they grab it and then immediately start chewing and constricting their food and then swallow it down whole. This is an egg-laying species like most snakes out there. Right now, these snakes are actually out trying to find mates and trying to find food. And these guys breed in May, and then these guys in early mid-June, the females will try to go out and find a place to lay eggs. The Utah milk snake is a subspecies of the western milk snake. Where I am right now is basically as far west as you can find a milk snake in the world. If you want to go out and find the snake yourself, if you're down on the desert floor, you're not in the right place. If you're up in the mountaintops, you're not quite in the right place. So these guys like it sort of in between. Because these guys live most of their lives underground, they need a soil that is fairly easy to burrow through. And so a much more sandy soil is what they like. And that might not sa sound like it has much to do with elevation, but it actually does. The elevation that these snakes are often found at actually corresponds with the elevation of the Bonneville Lake shoreline. Because when Lake Bonneville used to be here, the sandy beaches were that soil that these snakes like to burrow in now. Thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Utah milk snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Won't be easy, but we'll try. This is the holy grail of Utah's reptiles, and I had found it. But I was soon taunted with a question that echoed through my head. What now? What is there to do once you've reached the top of the mountain? Will I continue to look for milk snakes and try to see how many I can find and how many different places I can find them in? Or will I look for a different species I have yet to find? The answer is both. Because if there's one thing I've learned from this enchanting experience, it's that anything is possible. I totally did it! If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, 
make sure to subscribe.